All right, starting this out. No intro here. It's good All to right. you guys here today <laughs> with uh, the guitar guys. Uh, Matthew, I wasn't quite uh, 2,000 years late. I think I was closer to maybe about 30 seconds late, maybe a minute, somewhere around there. <sighs> But uh, we're waiting on Joey, but we got Scott here with us. And uh, this week is uh, Scott's turn to uh, choose the discussion. Yeah, yeah. And it sounds like you got the All YouTube right. playing. <laughs> yeah, I got it off now. I think I got it off. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to see what everybody does about how they begin, start their day play or start their practice. Like, what do you have to want? Some, do you warm up? What do you warm up to? What do you uh, exercises you might do? How you go about planning your practice uh, regimen for the day? Or, or if you do, if maybe some people might just freestyle all the way. <laughs> I got to warm up. I got like a series. I got a progression. I, I can't go straight into playing some fast songs or something. I got, I got to do a few exercises to warm up and then get familiar with the. Pentato then I'll get familiar with connecting the pentatonic boxes and a few scales before I can. And then I'll play a few simple songs. Before I can't just go right into technical stuff. I got my brain and my hands got to warm up. Oh, if absolutely. That, if that makes any sense. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. You know, and one of the things that, that you will always be told to do. Um, well, Did my mic just go out? Yeah, okay, sounds weird. Just yeah, sounds weird. Sounds like you're in the. I sounds like you're in a tunnel. Sounds like you're in a tunnel. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Let me mute myself. All right. Okay, I don't hear you. You're muted. Yeah, just go and talk to the people while I try and figure out what I did here. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, see, uh, Matt. Matt, uh, you play guitar, Matt? If so... What kind of music you play in? And do you want do you uh do anything special to warm up whenever you start your practice day? How often do you practice? How long do you practice? Same with Matthew, if you could. <laughs> okay. Nope, I still sound wacky. Yep, you're still in the tunnel. <laughs> yep. Uh, is anybody in out there? Okay, my guitar plug in like, did something. That's what I think was going okay. on. All right, yeah, you sound all right now. All right, let me see if I got my guitar plug back in. <laughs> Does that sound okay? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I think what ended up happening is something got switched on my guitar uh, plug-in over here. I'm using the Tone King Imperial uh, from Neural DSP. And um, I think what ended up happening is you were hearing me through the pickups in my guitar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because apparently you can do that. Hold on, let me do this. Hello. Check one, two, three, four. I've never seen one do that before. I don't think. <laughs> These are very high output pickups. I got my slash um, Gibson Les Paul right here with me. But uh, yeah, we got quite a few people in the chat here. We got Matt. We got the other Matthew. So um, yep, I do. Uh, Matt says I, I, he does simple scales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you just heard while you was gone. I was asking them what they might do to start their practice day and what they're playing. Oh, oh of course. I guess Matthew's a drummer, maybe. All right, there's. I don't know. There's uh, there's Joey there. <laughs> Finally decided to be able to make it. Excellent. Where you at? 
I apologize to uh, apologize to the folks waiting and uh, to you, Chris and Sean, but we got a disaster. It's not that we got a ton of snow. It's just every neighbor's snowblower has broken down. Oh, so I was just next door, and then I've got to I've got to check a neighbor down the street. But ah, so it never seems to end. <laughs> oh. But you can't leave these people. Believe it or not, we're like the we're like the kids of the neighborhood. So we're we're both in our late forties. So you can't leave leave these people hanging. You know. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> now, one thing. Um, uh, Chuck, you wanted to, Scott. You wanted to do a. Um, you wanted to do a show I was, and I was asking, practice r- routines down and whatnot, right? Yeah, yeah I kind of like that. Kind of see what everybody's might go about there. I know everybody's, I look at it like everybody's got a different goal, so that's going to affect what your practice mm-hmm. routine might be. And uh, me, I don't play nowhere. I'm just looking to entertain myself in my bedroom, you know, and then maybe surprise a friend or something when they come over. So uh, I'm looking to do cover tunes and maybe just experiment a little bit on my own tunes and uh I, but my hands, I gotta warm up. Getting older, I gotta warm up a lot. Or the uh, yep. to get, I can't go straight into. I can't go straight into Cramp playing fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get tendonitis in my wrist. Uh, mm. So, so I got a, so I got a progression of uh, exercises and stuff I gotta do to kind of warm up to it. But I've only got limited time to play, so I don't want to spend all my time exercising by the time I'm in there before mm-hmm. I get to play say uh so I'm always kind of noodling around with uh balancing the both of them and then I was just seeing what you guys do about how you go about your practice day or routine or how often how long things like that, that yeah believe, believe me I, I get it so because we we're we have a busy household here and it's a very dynamic environment so right oh yeah it's, well I'll, I'll tell you in terms of me I'll sometimes go through the scales like uh, like Matt does over there. Um, I usually don't warm up, but there's times where it's like I'm really sound about it. It's like, oh, I need, I need to warm up. And there's actually a really cool warm-up I do that help you, helps you stretch your fingers if you play it this certain way. It's that riff right there from Beat It. And let me see if I can set this up so you guys can see what my fingers are doing here Uh, all right so what i'm doing is i'm having to use all of my fingers then slide okay right so that riff right there for beat it I kind of tend to find that to be a pretty good warm-up ec- exercise, I find. All right. That's kind of what I do after, after... I'll tell you what, this is what I go... I, I usually... I'll start off with um, just doing some single-string one, one rhythm type of exercises just to, while I'm watching TV or something, just get my fingers going. And, uh, and then... Uh, but then, then I'll start doing cr- a few chromatic exercises and maybe change them up as I go. But just chromat one string after another, just fast and, and build up. Start off at a moderate speed and just kind of build my way up and work my way up the neck chromatically. I don't know if you can oh, hear that. Oh, gotcha. Or not. And then I'll work my way back then down the neck. So I'll be so, so so that way I'll be synchronizing my hand and my fingers and getting the speed up and the straight versus going. And the, you know, we're working my way up and down the neck, but and then I'll then I'll uh, start. I'll go, and then I'll go up and down the neck chromatically. Mm-hmm. I can't play like that, but yeah. up, up up. And then um, then once I then my fingers a little bit loose, I might have to smoke a cigarette. I got to take little breaks. Yeah. You know, then uh, <laughs> then I'll start play. Then I'll start uh, just doing little licks from like a pentatonic uh, scale, and, and then and then connecting the boxes and working in the hand, hammer rolls and play out. And then once I'm done, then I'll start playing um, songs that that I like you like you did with that beat it riff songs that I can uh, warm up to as I play it. Mm-hmm. Easy, so easier songs that uh, things of that nature. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And you know, one of the things to do, you know, you were talking about, you were kind of showing a little bit how you would go up and down the neck, and you would do uh, scales on on every string there. 
one of the things that's fun to do, especially for the people that love, you know, the really fast shredders type rock and roll, is kind of do those things with um, some tremolo picking. And um, yeah. Right. Yes, yeah, so that kind of warms up both both the hands a little bit there, and um, and I'm also trying to I'll try to work the uh, I'll usually I will usually work out a pentatonic because I ain't, I ain't very yeah. I ain't very good at the other other scales and the major scale, but uh, I'll try to okay. I'll connect. I'll connect um start connecting the boxes a little bit just uh, like pick a scale if I, if I want to play an A minor I'll, I'll, I'll connect the boxes just a little bit just to get my my visuals to, so I can see my neck visually you know get my get my head into it yeah <laughs> you you okay down there Joey looks like Joey. he's falling over Are you drunk Joey I thought maybe oh my God. I thought maybe he's in the in Ukraine or something. <laughs> Yeah, you get Shit bombed is going over. sideways here. <laughs> <laughs> is this gonna work? Yeah, I am a consummate. Pro- I am a consummate professional, and I, I urge you all to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. I see where Matthew down there said he likes stretching out before routine. Or before it's like watching Curly from the Three Stooges. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, he likes. I see where. Out. I see where. I see where Matthew say like stretching. I did look look up about where, where people do showing all the exercise they do for the plan. And I'm just not that guy, you know. I mean, I, sh- I should be. I'm not disciplined enough to stretch out like people, you know, do all the stretches. And when, I've always, uh, even when I played sports, I wasn't really into stretching. I wanted to just go out there and get it. <laughs> but you know, but stretching yeah. it, but like he says, is probably uh, something I should do actually. Yeah, that's that's something that you know a lot of people say say to do. And the thing is. As we get older, we understand the reason why we do that in sports, and maybe even guitar yeah, yeah. as well. You know, because right. nowadays, as we get older, man, we can really hurt ourselves. Yep. Yep. Is that too loud, guys? Is it loud enough? Uh, no, usually what I'll start with is, and I picked this up watching a Pantera video when I was a kid. And what Dimebag Daryl would start to do, though. Be... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Up one, friend. Yep, that's the. Yeah. All the way up. All the way down. Just cut. Go. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's um, one of the. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> Going back down is so much harder. It really wasn't so much of a scale as it's alternating one, two, three. So right. one, two, it's three notes, but you're alternating the fingers. So it's it's years and years of doing that. So, yeah. I think we're all in agreement. We're all in our, you know, we're all on in years. And so, you, do you, do you have like a, a certain amount of time you warm up or just when it feels good? Not really. It depends. Because um, like I got a lot of the same stuff going on that um, you do. Like I got 
purple right. tunnel that flares, flares up every so often. It's, it's all dependent on what I've done that day. Um, and if I'm like really hurting or, um, and I'm also, de I'm also dealing with a pretty serious spinal issue. And depending on you know, <laughs> sit, sitting position. Uh, um, warming up just for me is usually just. <laughs> Yeah, kind of, kind of. Oh, after I do my little my chromatic, after I do my chromatic exercises and stuff like you was doing, uh, then I'll uh, start. I'll just kind of meander and noodle my way around the guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, before th then, then I'll usually start going into uh, looking up whatever song it is I'm wanting to play or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and and I do kind of the same thing, Scott. Um, I want to say thank you. To I do a lot of noodling. <laughs> yeah, Electra, thanks for the five dollars super chat there. She said, "Yeah, Scott Fitzpatrick, you, Christopher, and the Redneck uh, Snow Demon, all in one place. <laughs> Great show. So thank you for that. Thank you very much, dear." <laughs> Yeah, one of the things I do, um, Scott, is I find myself at times, um, instead of warming up, I'll go and grab the guitar off of the off of the wall. Like a lot of the times, I'll be resting, and it's like I feel like playing something. And um, so, what ultimately ends up happening is I do the thing that you're not supposed to do. Which is, you know, constantly go and play the things that you've played over and over that's, again. Yeah, that's what actually, that was kind of my point of this discussion too, because that's what exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I find myself playing the same things over and over again. Mm -hmm. But uh, and uh, not, I'm, I'm looking to learn, get out of my comfort zone, yeah. my routine. <sighs> Absolutely. And that's something that we have to do because, you know, I mean, after I gave it up after about 16 years, I was like, OK, you know, why do I find myself playing the same thing and not playing um, as much as I knew back then? You know, and so now yeah. what I tend to do is I tend to try and learn parts of songs that I want to learn. And I learn those patterns that are being used. And the thing that you'll learn through that is certain people use certain patterns over and over again. And I will go and incorporate those patterns up and down the neck in different keys. And a lot of the times I'll end up incorporating those into my songs as well. Right. Yeah, once you once you start learning a guitar player like Dave Mustaine or Stevie Ray Vaughan or any of those any of those dudes, you start to hear, you know what they're playing, you start to develop an ear for it. So, yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. agreed. So, and that's you know, imitation is a sincere sincerest form of flattery. So, you know, if you're taking bits and pieces from you know your rock gods and incorporating them into your own your own work so it's, it's great you know do you guys do you guys record yourselves a lot i do no i don't even like I looking need, at I, me on this camera so it's well, i do in terms yeah. of and disappointing like, if i have an idea of something i'm strumming around on something or i'm playing a lead part and i want to use that for something later I'll go and put it into my jar and start playing something. But sometimes I'll find myself playing some one thing and realizing I'm playing something else. Like uh, yeah. yesterday, I was uh, I was laying in bed. I think I was watching Night Court or something like that, and I found myself starting to play. And I was like, oh, basically I'm playing. Yeah. 
I realized that I was basically playing uh, a variation of um, <laughs> of the song um, uh, Over the Hills and Far Away by Led Zeppelin. Because as soon as I started humming, I was thinking, Baby, got the love I need. <laughs> Baby, more than enough. <laughs> The lyrics are already written for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of something. What? Um, I'm also peeking at the chat here. No, it's got to be old night court. Yeah. If you, if Chris is watching, I watched the new them night both. Court. I was watching the old ah. night court that night. Um, I don't oh, so know what sort of let's play with it. Oh, you guys play for. That was another thing I was going to ask you: is if you guys, if you guys play for metronome much, or have like a practice routine with a metronome? Slightly. I, I, I use drum tracks. Yeah. Okay. That, be, that counts as metronome to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I. I. And then, and then, I and okay and do you get? Yeah. Oops, sorry. I'm do you play to it? Do you play? It? Yeah, just a little bit, but it's, it's okay. Um, do you? Uh, Improv a lot, like play back and tracks, just improv over them. freestyle. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's, <laughs> what? Yeah, when I I'm first, listening. Uh, oh, it's all good. <laughs> whenever, <laughs> whenever I first start, uh, I put on the drum track for the reason of trying to put something down and come up with ideas you know and so a lot of yeah. times there'll be a lot of improv in, in that and even when I'm recording like a final version of something it's a lot of improv so play are you going to show first? <laughs> You getting what improv first, or are you waiting for me? I don't know. Oh, I don't even know what. <laughs> but you said you were you improv a lot. I was waiting for you to. Oh no! I mean, or... like a. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um. You're right there. You, yeah, you I took did. a bad hit. Long Go ahead. <laughs> bong hits are killer. <laughs> Va vapor bong. I don't see any smoke, so. No, just regular weed. I don't do that vape. Just regular flour. Off air, you're gonna have to. Uh, um, you're gonna have to give me your address. If it if it's legal in your state, I'll send you some. Yeah. My, my yeah, it's legal. My, so. My it's re it's, it's recreational in. legal here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't talk about that on here. But we'll <laughs> they, they gave up on us here in upstate New York, so they're just like, ah, get it. Yeah. Too many, too many other things to worry about. Right. They're like, one cool thing about living in this dump of a state. <laughs> One thing I'm myself I'm famous for is, um, and you had mentioned this falls into the timing thing that you you were just mentioning. Um, I don't really play with a metronome. I've got kind of an okay ear. I can pick things out, and whatnot. But I've got a. We're not trying to be an asshole and brag or anything, but I've got a really good sense of timing. I've got a really good sense of pocket, and I can usually fall in and pick pick right up with no problem. And where I'd like to think I learned that from was really watching Malcolm Young, the mm -hmm. rhythm guitar player for ACDC. Because yeah. even in the mid 80s, with a case and a half of Michelob flowing through his veins before showtime, and a bottle of Jack Daniels stuffed behind the drum riser, he never messed uh, up. He fell down quite a few times, but he still he kept right on playing. And uh, that. He's a he's like guitar yeah, the, like hero for me. The the um, 
What I found the uh, metronome was more useful for me was to uh, building up my speed by making me dis but with discipline building up the speed. Like if I did it 150 beats per minute or whatever, and then I turn it up five, and turn it up, turn it up. It, it was more of a help building up speed and discipline is what it worked out for me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and, and the thing is, I remember when I was younger, I used to play a lot with my brothers. I got one brother who's a drummer. I got another brother that's a bass player. And I realized that I was learning wrong back then because me being the older brother, I'm like, everybody follow me. I had to learn how to follow a drummer. And a buddy of mine who plays in a very popular uh, metal band in the area said that his playing changed a lot and he got to be a lot of a, a lot better player when he started using a metronome and him and I used to be yeah. in a band together many years ago and um, at that time Eric wasn't that great of a guitarist and now the guy is one of the best in the area and a lot of it he attributes to making himself play with a metronome. Yeah. See, I was real. I didn't know what a metronome was till actually not too long ago, maybe five, eight years ago. I didn't even know what one was. And then once I started using one, I wish I would have used that at the beginning of my guitar playing. I, I, I can see where it helps. It helped me a lot. I just... Hey, Jake. Look, check this out, Jake. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Is that the shirt you, that you got, recently ordered? That shirt. That's awesome. <laughs> yep. Oh, Just come in today. Oh, it came in today. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, I ended up taking on a couple of students a little while ago. And oh, really? I, yeah, I have them I have them play to a metronome. Um Actually, Google has a metronome. For those that don't know, just type in Google metronome, and it'll whatever beat per minute you want. And it is it's an excellent tool, especially when you're you know running scales or. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they Absolutely, and that's. That reminds me of something that I do with my students whenever they first start to come. I say one of the first things you got to learn how to do is one of the issues I had was only using certain fingers. And one of the first things I do with my students is try to build up their dexterity and all their fingers. So there's an exercise that I teach them. That many of you guys may be familiar with. Uh, some of the people watching may not. But it's the spider exercise. You do one. Hold on. Let me go turn this up. One, two, three, you know four. And then you have them go one fret down. And do that so they can build up the de dexterity in all of their fingers, you know. Is that stretch? Yeah, and also, uh, you know, I I am still, you know, I try not to use the pinky finger, and many people start <laughs> out that way, and it is a tough thing to break yourself of, but you have to do it. So even for myself. I go and rely on this exercise as well to build up the dexterity in all my fingers. All right. Yeah, in preparing for this, uh, knowing this is coming up, I was just looking on the to see what YouTube people uh, exercises they do. And what, uh, that spider exercise you just showed, I've seen that come up a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because... It's Say what? It's, a, it's very effective. It works. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I will, Jake. <laughs> oh, real quick, guys. Sylvia. Um, Sylvia, sweetheart, I saw your, your chat message pop up. We didn't, I don't know anything by UFO, but... Um, oh. <laughs> There 
goes. And Kai says the spider rattle in our exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Kai has a show over there at uh, the, the Joey C Network or Joey C TV. Go check out yeah. Kai's show over there. He's a, he's up at the it's a, it's on at the butt crack of morning. But whenever I'm up, I watch it. That's one of my uh, if I'm up at, whenever it's on and I'm up, I'm, I watch it. It's good. It's good. It's a good morning show. Oh, wonderful! He's got a good morning he voice. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's working on it. He's getting some people over. Wow. I think Spider has his own show to show as well, or no? He's he, he's got Joey actually has. I hate to say this, stop saying it. He's got potential. He really does. And I, I, I think so. He gets people talking. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I feel the main reason people watch him is to wait for him to go just effing ballistic. So, because it's just the fuse is always lit. Like, I thought I had anger problems. And you see, <laughs> I was the guy that told Joey, don't let them get to you for the longest time. Maybe I'm giving him the wrong information. <laughs> have you seen some of his Reddit posts? They're phenomenal. I, I have not. <laughs> I've ne never seen language where people threatened like that. It's oh gosh! Dude, does not. I didn't expect Joey. To, anyone? I didn't expect Joey to be uh, up up on the Joey scene. <laughs> I, I lurk in the background, so. <laughs> oh goodness! I don't want to get involved because I know I'll get wrapped into it. Um, and how do I? Another. Oh, go ahead. How do you explain defending someone like Joey Senior, you know, your in-laws or whatever? You saw you on an internet yeah, show. Yeah. This piece of shit threatening <laughs> to burn down the... <laughs> you know, another thing do that you guys I... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to... Uh, uh, Okay, if you practice every day, do you try to make sure you practice every day, even if, or do you skip some days because you have to? It's hard at times. Some days I'll go five days without picking up a guitar because I have so much that I. Have and you feel to get guilty, done. don't you? I do. Because you feel I'm guilty whenever you. Going, I do too. <laughs> I mean, look at this wall over here. I'm like, I've spent all yeah. of this money on all of this stuff and a lot of the gear, other gear that you guys don't see. And I'm sitting there going, yeah. you know, I'm not learning anything new. I'm not, you know, really moving forward all that much. You know, and some of the times I'll have to, on top of the headstock, I'll have to go and wipe a little bit of dust off of some of them. And it always <laughs> makes me feel bad. Yep, yep. Yeah. You know, here's another good good exercise that I have my students do as well, is I will supply them a backing track when they learn a new scale. And what I do yeah. is, is, say they're learning the G scale, I will go and send them right. a backing track in G. And a lot of them have the positive grid spark amplifiers so they can play mp3s to it while they're playing over it and i'll tell them you know go and play those notes over this learn how to bend in the right places you know and all that stuff because sometimes when they want to go to that high highest note or like if they want to go sometimes depending upon the key you're in you don't want to bend that high because it'll take you out of key. And so I always say, go and look at the notes you have coming after. Say, for instance, this. Do you need to go up a whole step? Do you, need, can all, do you only need to go up a half step? You know. So you do some ear training there is what I see. A little bit of ear training, but I also tell them as well. Like, for instance, get familiarized with how, what you have to, how much you have to pull to make this sound like this or like this right. so see we took it up a whole step there you know right. so. Right. 
Sylvia hey, says to do yeah. some SRV to warm up the fingers. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to learn that whole thing where he's like muting most of the strings except for yeah, one and yeah. doing that walk along. That is tough. Let me know stuff. how that works out. Let me know yeah. how that works out. Not I too had a well. buddy of mine for two literally for two years working on scuttle button. Mm -hmm. By CV Ray. He's like, dude, it's six notes. It's six yeah. notes. But I oh, can't yeah. play it. Yeah, and he's a good he's a good guitar player. Yeah. See that don't even and sound right. Like, Not even close. It's that time <laughs> And it's the percussive. And it's just, yeah. I obviously don't have it, but but that dude could. Stevie Ray was. He was an alien. Pretty. Definitely. His, and his, his style in blues, and probably, I mean, I know there's some crazy, crazy good guitar players out there now, but Stevie Ray's. Still in the top ten has to be. Oh yeah, in the world. Now let me ask you, based upon Matt's comment over here, he says, "I feel like taking yeah. time off definitely helps, especially if you wear yourself down for playing just like exercise." Have you guys found this to be the case, or kind of the opposite? Yeah, well, combining that really with also, good. yeah, well, combining that question of uh, what Kai said up there about playing every day, he said, "I like." I can play every day, but I might only have a half hour, and I don't want to spend all that time warming up. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. See, one of the things I do as well is whenever I hit a roadblock like that, there's an app that I have on my phone. You remember when we were younger, guys, you would go and buy the tablet or books, and they'd be like, you know, 20 bucks, oh, wow. 25 bucks to go and do that. Um, there's an app that you can get on your phone, and I think it costs... $23, $25 a year. And it's called Ultimate Guitar. And like, you know, for instance, I ended up looking up how to play Sailing by Christopher Cross. Okay? It gives me the tablature for that. Right there. And, you know, you can kind of, you know, that's something that kind of helps, I think. Kind of help a person to, you know... Yeah, I've got I've got two yeah. uh, tab uh, apps on my phone, Songster, and I think I might have Ultimate Same Guitar here. too. So, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, so See, I've got it on my goodness. phone, and I've also got it on my computer. So, so that's my go-to. Oh, you figured it out? No, yeah, almost, almost. Did well, you guys so. see the Rick Beato interview with Christopher Cross? No, but then again, I have a Check hard time out. watching Rick Beato. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'm really selective on what what I watch of his, but um, he I didn't know who really know who Christopher Cross was before this because I, really? I didn't listen to Yacht Rock or um, that stuff they play in the men's room at the highway rest stop for the fellas that you know <laughs> too, too long. Overnight. Well, that's what I listen to. And, okay. um, <laughs> and but. That dude is scary good. Like, super, super good guitar player. Oh, yeah, and a hell of a so I, I didn't realize too. how good he was. Yeah, really. You know, I don't have to like the songs to appreciate them. Like, I don't like Taylor Swift whatsoever. But the bitch no. is setting the world on fire. <laughs> so she's doing better than me. So she's obviously got it. And she's doing it right. So, yeah. You know, and... Another one that surprised me if you know Christopher Cross is able to play this song, um, play the lead guitar part song live while singing it at the same time. There's another oh, yeah. guy that I did not know that he was actually playing the lead guitar while singing, and that's old Robin Zander on the song uh, The Flame. <laughs> Thank you. 
That is tough to play and sing live right there. Yeah, I have the worst time singing and playing at the same time. I really, I'm really envious of people that can do it. Especially lead uh, guitar even, parts when you're just the singer of them. I can't talk and play at the same time or I'll start, my, or my speech will start talking in some kind of weird rhythm or something. Or, oh, really? Yeah, I'll just yeah, lose it. Also, yeah. <laughs> start skipping. You start talking in between notes and you're trying to kind of, I can't, I can't do it. I can do a little bit of backup singing, and you know I'm okay with that. But oh yeah, uh, Prince, you know Prince was the best of the best. Yeah, best of the best. The guy could do yeah. it all. Fun. I did, was I, a showman. Yeah, I didn't recognize that until get, it wasn't until I got older that I recognized some guitar players that I should have appreciated back in the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't until a couple of years ago I seen Prince uh, playing some live stuff and impressed me. <laughs> Oh yeah! I didn't know he did that shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally until after he died, I didn't realize what a contribution he made. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, you could not. I remember watching documentaries on Prince years and years ago, and how he'd play everything on the albums, how he would record every single day, how massive that vault is. There's like hundreds of albums in there. You know, that are just waiting to be released. You know, I mean, how meticulous he was with his band, and yeah, <laughs> rehearsals would be torture, but I, you know, they'd get it after a while, but not exactly how he wanted you know, everything. But you know, I figured doing these but, uh guitar shows were going, it's kind of a little bit of a learning process for us, too. And uh, I, what I wish I would have done differently today was, was brought some tablature, uh. Some of the warm up exercises where we could have put them on the screen or something. Well, speaking of. We could, so, um, some, some visuals. Well, speaking yeah. of, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to make this or not today. Um, <laughs> I thought I may have to bomb out at the last minute, but then I just said, screw it, and give me a side. But, um, Chris, I did send you a link to a Google um, Drive folder. It has a ton of stuff in it, um, just like uh, Scott was talking about. There's stuff okay. you, I don't know if you know how to do it, how to put it on screen. There's a few oh, exercises. You to me. I didn't, I didn't notice it until yeah. now. You see, that would have been cool if I could, we could have put, I could have showed you a few of my, visually showed you a few of my chromatic exercises down and yeah. you guys could I vice versa. And it, it, then people watching could check them out and we'd have a... Right. Exactly. Now start over. Yep, that's exactly. Ah, it's not I figure these first few is going to be uh, we're kind of learning, ain't we? Yeah. Okay, it's Jake, I do remember when. It's pulling up I remember when Brett Michaels. <laughs> You've tuned down a half step, ain't you? Yeah. All of a sudden, Scott and and uh, yeah. jo and Joey are going to jam here. I'm going to pull myself out. <laughs> I think we're tuned differently. I, I should not have played that in front of people. That was, that was embarrassing. <laughs> Oh no, that's what I, that's one of my actually that's one when I talk in terms of warming up that's one of my warm up songs. Whenever I warm my fingers up and then that that, that one I play is one of my warm up songs. 
Uh, I was going to play along with you, but I think I'm... I don't know if you recognize that or not, but I, I love ACDC. Great band, and but uh, have you, you, you heard their song Riff Raff? Riff Raff, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It starts out, it's like... <laughs> and it took me so long to learn it. I'm having some audio realize. issues, so I'm going to try and fix those, and I'll be right, right. back. Okay. We still love you. Like, push, push <laughs> yourself a little bit. Like, don't don't go crazy. And, um, you know, stuff that's just going to get you frustrated. But, um, are you familiar with Iron Maiden at all? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I never thought I would be able to play fan of the app. <laughs> It's just you know, <laughs> practicing, practicing, practicing. It's going slow at it. They even have a live version of it where they play it even faster. <laughs> Yeah, let's kick ass. I, when you fight, yeah, I didn't, you fight uh, yourself in a rut. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you, well, when you find yourself uh, in a rut, I didn't. Um, <laughs> hey, shit. <laughs> I'm lagging you. <laughs> go ahead, Scott. No, okay. I was go what I was going to say is uh, Iron Maiden, even though I grew up with them. <laughs> I didn't really learn. Uh, I didn't. Learn, I didn't. I didn't start appreciating him until like five years ago. I started listening to him, and now they're one of my favorite uh, bands from that era. Now, yeah, that's, that's like a good. A that's a lot of lot of a lot of good guitar shit in them. <laughs> yeah, then um, Adrian uh, Smith and uh, or, yeah, I almost said Adrian Vanderberg from band. <laughs> Uh, Adrian Smith and Dave Murray, they were a lethal guitar duo. Uh, so, I don't like I don't I don't much care for the Swedish prick they have playing with them now. So the three guitar duo. Yeah. It's your fancy ass with this three single coil yeah. under it's not Iron Maiden. <laughs> I'm going to change. It's ours. I had to go and put mine up because I kept having issues with my plug-in running into loopback. It kept switching my audio to the, the coils on the guitar. And so, yeah, that, really? that became so, my microphone. So, so that was your mic? Really? Wow. Yeah, uh, well, it kept, it kept doing that. Like whenever I would, like I got so much stuff in front of me, if something like slightly pulled out, that's what would happen. So I was like, okay, I got to put the guitar away. <laughs> I need no, to better I'm... organize my desk, essentially. That's <laughs> I figured uh, we'll be learning to do things better as we go. Uh, yeah, if I, oh, of course. If we have some visuals, like, you know what I was talking about, maybe like layup, uh, when I was talking about doing those chromatics, if I had a, 
a visual to come up. Yeah. I'm yeah, wondering. I got, the, I got the thing that Joey sent me, and the funny thing is that it pulls up fine on my phone, but when I try and do it on the computer, it's saying bad request. I don't understand. So. Hmm. That I do not understand. I set it up where anyone who has that link, anyone who has the link can um, do anything with this. You can edit it. You can edit the stuff. So it's like full control over it. Let me check it one more time. Let me try doing it. You guys watch it. You guys watch any good YouTube guitar lesson people? Uh, yeah. Ben I, I like a Who? I'm sorry. Ben Eller. Is his ben name. Eller. Oh yeah, yeah, I know him. Yeah, I know that guy. I watch that guy. Yep. You're going to know Steve Stein then, right? Yeah. That, no. That's my favorite one. Some something about the way he talks and things hit with me. You know, some uh, some people People tell you the same thing, but then there's just that same guy can tell you something, and it, you yeah. understand him. And Ooh, yeah. for some reason, everything clicks to me. If him, uh, he opened a lot of doors for me. He's my favorite, Steve Stein. Cool. You see, Ben Eller was like that with me. I really, I he sp he spoke my language. I guess you could say. So, and yeah, yeah, I was able to understand Ben's things up with, with me so. too. <laughs> yeah, this is um, yeah, I like yeah, I like it. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, like, yeah, uh, uh, bringing up, like, whenever I was talking about doing exercises or whatever, if I was, it would have been cool if I'd been able to kind of show them like that. <laughs> the tab do you want me to, uh, Joey, do you want me to put this link in the chat for people who are watching so they can download this from the Google Drive? Yeah, if you, if you want to, they're more than welcome to. There's a ton of stuff in there. There's actually, um, you know, don't let the secret out, folks, but there is John Petrucci's Rock Discipline in there, the video and the workbook. Um, I gave you a three or four hundred page scale and arpeggio guide that has music and tablature. In it. And it will go through and break down each scale. It's super in depth, but it also just has the scales on the page. So if you don't want to read about it, fine. If you want to learn new scale, new arpeggios, there's a ton of really good stuff in there. All right. Yeah, the, uh, there's a lot of stuff in here, and uh, I put the download link in the chat, so you guys can go and uh, download it there. I'm going to see if I can edit it into the description as well. I just thought of something. <laughs> what is that, Scott? Um, if I would have like, like, if I had one exercise I wanted to show you, like one of the first ones I was talking about, chromatic exercises. If I would have sent you a picture of that, if I would have sent you a picture of that, you could have put that up as I was talking about it, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I should have done. That's what I'm going to do for the future. That's what, uh, so that way you get a visual at the same time. Because I can barely get my hand with my guitar up here. And so, uh, yeah, that would have been a lot better. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah we'll, 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 you know, anytime you need to do anything like that, you have any questions about that, just let me know. We'll see if we can figure something out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it won't allow me to put that Next into the description better. now because we're live, but I will add it to the description later. But I did put it here in the chat for everybody so that uh, they'll be able to go and download it if they are in the chat. All those PDF files kind of help you and all that good stuff. So thank you for that, Joey. Yep. And there's, if somehow you get bored with that, it's not... Um, because, you know, you'll end up buying some books or getting some, you know, like scale, scale guys or what have you, and they don't click with you. They're not... You know, 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Scott yeah. and I were just saying, I mean, that's speaking your language. Yeah. I've got more. Plenty, plenty more. Uh, I'm happy oh, to yeah. share. I, st I still find myself oh, buying the books. Know. You know? <laughs> There's, I've got, and I guess it's the books that I have bought in the past, and also like Guitar World and Guitar Player Magazine. We used to get that religiously when I was younger. And, um, oh yeah, yeah. Some of the some of the trans transcriptions were so bad; <laughs> they weren't even close to accurate. So, yeah, didn't we mention that thinking? last week about how um, the art of guitar ended up going and doing a series on some, how bad some of them were? <laughs> I don't remember if we talked about, it, but I know it's a yeah. fact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he has a whole yeah. video series. If you go and find the YouTube channel, Art of Guitar, he'll go and get a, like a lot of these books that were printed in the 90s and even some modern ones or some that were printed in the 80s. And in, he recently did a Def Leppard one. He's like, what the heck are they trying to do here? You know, and he's like, this is not even close. He did that with Def Leppard, did that with Metallica, did that with... Um, Quite a few other bands as well. Yeah, some of the transcriptions were insanely, they were horribly, horribly off. Like for the longest time, I used to think I knew how to play, um, you, you know the song Angry Again by Megadeth? I don't. Maybe Scott does. Yeah. <laughs> There was a lot going on there, and the transcription, I can't even remember the bad transcription that I got, but it was, <laughs> it had you starting up, you know, I started on the D and these guys had you starting on the G. And they were, and, I, and then the first one, the first one, had his glide on. Just be sweet. You can hear it, you can slide. So who are they paying to do this? Did anybody proofread it? Uh, obviously not. Yeah, some of them are are incredibly bad. I was I was surprised at how bad the uh, Metallica one was that he brought up, and the um, the Def Leppard one. You know, there were some things that were pretty bad off, but not as bad as the Metallica one. I mean, it was horrible. Yeah, there's some of them. Um... That CB Ray you just showed us, is that a Hal Leonard? Oh, uh, let me is that check. The publisher? It is. Uh, recorded versions, guitar, authentic transcriptions with notes and tablature, translated by John Tepila. Yeah, Hal Leonard is on the back over here. Yeah, they're trustable. They're, they're oh, huge. Really? They're, they're, yeah, great big transcription company. But they're, they're pretty quality. Pretty good work. You know, I think the, um, the book that I had that I, when I was taking guitar lessons when I was 15, I think it was also Hal Leonard as well. Now, they very well may have done their um, company back in the day putting out all the shitty stuff. And they just stepped up their game and did it right. I don't know. They, they very well made them. They've yeah, been around this forever. Was, this was printed in 1990. Yeah, it was about our time. So. Yep. How are the transcriptions in that? Pretty close. I haven't really played around with it too much. Uh, I plan to, to deep dive into it later. The one for Love Struck Baby. It seems to be pretty ac accurate. So, I'll see as I dig, dig deeper into it.
Let's see. Johnny says, what was that company that did VHS lessons? Doug Marks. Is that, is Doug that who Marks, it was? Um, I can't remember the name of it. I'll look it up. Let me see if I find out here. But that's that's a dude's name is Doug Marks. He isn't in he's still doing it. Um oh, that's really? my uh, do you see the boo boo on the elbow? I want to go back. Um <clears throat> metal method. Doug Marks, metal method. Oh gotcha. Yep, I'm, I, I, you know, as a matter of fact, I found the old uh, Hal Leonard one that I had, vintage Hal Leonard, Hal, Hal Leonard guitar method, with the VHS. You get a VHS with that one as well. I never got the VHS. <laughs> hey, oh, Jib, I, I sent you something. Yeah, I sent you some a message. Would something like this would have would this been able to something would have helped us like as a visual demonstration here? Let me that go you would have been pulled. Pull, that you could have put. That you could pull up always uh, talking, maybe? Yeah. Absolutely here. Let me see. And if so, then uh, the next time we do these, uh, I'll be, have a little more. It'll be better. <laughs> like Esteban, this instructional okay. method for the guitar. Esteban? Oh, goodness. Remember when that piece yeah. of shit came out? Yep. They marketed I got that one, dude, dude as if did you? <laughs> I got I got one right now in the closet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Because <laughs> they marketed this this slimy cocksucker as he's been around forever. He is the master of the guitar and I have this fine super quality guitar and you're looking at it, and it's like, yo, the frets are coming out of it. It's junk. <laughs> it's <just> shit. <laughs> yeah, take me a minute to dig it out, but I'll try to bring that next time. Uh, that would be cool just a just a goof on. Yeah. Uh, it's like where did this guy come from? Where does oh, nice hat. <laughs> There's that spider walk he was talking about. Yep, yep, I saw it in there. Where'd it go? There it is. Probably needed to save it as an image, however, and do it. Okay. And then you be able this way. Let's see here. We go in here and upload it right here. Oh, see if I had like a picture like that up there whenever I was talking about my chromatic exercise that would have been like a visual to help it along. Yeah. Yeah, I just wish I knew how to zoom in on my Mac. Because there's a way to do it. I just don't know how to do it. Control plus. Well, that one you... That one you got up there, though, that's one of my warm ups. Yep. Nope, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, Sean, that's killer. I I used to fawn over those catalogs when I was a kid. I'd just oh, be really? looking through them and looking through them. Yeah, the musician's friend catalog. Yeah. No, oh, so did I. So did I. That and um, all the ads they had in Guitar World of things that I could not afford at 16 years old. Yeah. You know. yeah. That's why. Whenever I, I get my guitar my magazine, whenever. When I first get my guitar magazine, I'd get that in my guitar and run straight to the bathroom. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I need Joe Walsh to set up videos. All right. I need, I need to check those out. 
Only Joe Rolsch would make guitar tuning guitar faces, and he does. <laughs> I use tens. Tens? Yeah. I use half. What brand do you use? I used to use uh, GH Boomers. Just because they're cheap. Balls. <laughs> yeah. That's why I used to get Army Ball guns because they were cheap and I like the boomers. Cool. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, I like to use Can 11s, except for on my Wolfgang. I got 9s on that one because I don't want to have to do a whole setup on a Floyd Rose. Um, so I just keep that one at uh, at uh, the 9s on that one, but most of my guitars have 11s, most of them. The Johnny, to answer your question, I have a really weird, um, really weird answer for that. I I always think that the, the guitar itself will will pick what gauge of strings it wants it on there, which ones feel the best on there. Like I don't have all nines. Like I, I do a lot of repairs, so I got like I think I got like fifty sets of strings or so. But they're all in varying gauges. But I really think the guitar picks what gauge strings it, it plays best with. So I feel you could have two identical Les Pauls and they need two different set, two different gauges. Usually yeah, kind of like flat my, between nines and elevens. Like one of the things, like with my Les Paul, which is probably one of the best setup guitars I have ever owned in my life. Um, I actually get the strings that they made for that guitar. And it's a mixed set that has, you know, some of the strings heavier than usual, some of them lighter than usual. And I tend to use those, considering it's a mixed set. You know, I just get those for, for, for that one. And then I got a couple of sets of uh, tens in here from Ernie Ball. Yeah, because you always break them when you put them on and stretch them. Oh, yeah. That's why I always get extra ten, extra ten gauges. Figure after 20 years, I, I'd, I'd stop pulling on them so hard. But. Oh, yeah. But, you know, when I was younger, wow. I was constantly breaking those, and I was using, like, mainly nines. So now that I use 11s, I don't tend to have that problem as much anymore. If you ever want to practice you like your button. down down picking, I'd go for a Ramon song. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Johnny Ramon play, but you. I can't even down pick that fast. I oh, it's all down it. picking. It's all down picking. Now, doesn't James Hetfield kind of do the same thing as well? He yeah. said, James Hetfield said Marky Ramon is his influence for down picking. Gotcha. It's where he, he watches Mark, Marky Ramon on it on down picking. Or Johnny Ramon, sorry. Marky's yeah. the drummer. Gotcha. And he didn't. He said he didn't realize he was doing anything special. He's like, that's just how I know how to play. Ah, can't do it. That's one of the things that I had to do because all of mine, except for strumming, was all down picking. All of my notes, all the time. And I've had to learn to go back and forth. I've, that's one of the things that I realized when I was younger that I learned wrong. That you had to have a, you know to pick a particular way um, in order for it to sound the way you want to. And I didn't know anything about, you know, 
going back and forth. If you guys have ever heard that, this is called, it's a DiMarizio Air Norton. It's a okay. stacked single coil. So it's technically ah. a humbucker. Yeah. Uh, and it cleans up like full volume. Cleans up really, really well. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not a single coil guy. So. <laughs> Me either. I'm the one oddball out of everyone here who likes his single coils and his humbuckers. Depends upon what he's on wanting to do. Johnny says, never yes. stop learning. He's absolutely right. right. This kind of what I was getting at today was, because uh, I don't want to stop, you know, the never stop learning is how to maximize your time. And so if, if you want to, if, if, if by the time I warm up and then if I want to practice, say, downstrokes and upstrokes and single picking and finger picking and, and, and hammer-ons and pull-offs and learn cover songs, there's not enough time, you know, every day to do all this shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that I do is... I will try and learn a new technique every so often. Like, you know, when I started really starting to play blues, it was the pick scrape. It's like that opened up a whole new world to me, learning how to do the, do the pick scrape. And, you know, things like that. When I was younger, the two-hand tapping was the big thing because I was a big Eddie Van Halen fan. Doing all that, now I could two-hand tap all day long, and people are like, wait a minute, you suck on most things, but you sound exactly like Eddie with that. And it's like, well, yeah, that's because I've been doing that since I was 15 years old. You know, I used to be able to do it on, a, on, a, on an acoustic, you know. And then, yeah. and then talking about all finding time to do all these practice, all this practice, and that doesn't count having time to experiment with equipment and with different equipment, different guitars, all the tones and all that. What is, I don't have the time for all this stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of the things. When I first started doing my guitar-related channel, um, I had a lot of time to go and do that in the afternoons. But, uh, you know, now it is I got so much other stuff on my plate that, you know, I love, for instance, that Tonex pedal, you know. And the thing is I've, I used it to record a lot of stuff on my most recent album. And a couple, uh, about a month ago, no, two months ago, I ended up going and buying the Saldano Neural DSP plugin. I have not even touched that plugin yet. I haven't had the time, haven't done that. And my Tonex pedal, I keep saying, you know, ever since Slash announced his uh, amp from Magnetone, I'm going to believe, I was like, okay, I know that IK Multimedia has a capture on the, of that thing on there now. I need to go and put that on my Tonex pedal. Haven't done it. I don't even know where my charging mechanism is for that pedal right now. I just don't have the time like I used to have. <laughs> That's one thing I've, re I've encountered with, is I've really studied really deep diving the modeling software lately. Like that's what I'm using now is it's going through my computer. It's not going through a real amp or anything. It's going through my computer into a uh, into a little PA, and oh, nice. I spend so much time twisting buttons on the computer and checking out different pedals and different presets. And then, oh wait, there's a different amp, and then there's a different turn that's on up here. Just I'm play, so dude. far behind play. on all that. Uh, catch up. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, not, yeah. that's exactly. I, I just want to play. <laughs> yeah, a year, and a, a, a year and a half ago, I was completely illiterate to it. I had no idea how to do it. I could not even get a sound out of my computer with my guitar. And then I bought a Line 6 interface at a garage sale for 20 bucks, And it included Pod Farm 2, the software, the modeling software. I was hooked. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, you know, and, and and same here. I was, you know, trying out everything and everything for the longest time, and now it's like, okay, I have my certain things that I use for certain things. Like I'll use the the Tone King Imperial plugin for some bluesy stuff. If I want to mix a piezo sound in with an electric, then I'll use the Tim Henson plugin. And if I want to get uh, that really ballsy um, tone, then I'll use the Mega Boogie. Um, thing, or I'll use if I'm doing some 80s style stuff, I'll use the McRockland suite. So it's like one of those things that it's like I haven't really branched out from that because that has worked for me and it's quick for me to go and pull up and immediately have it on hand. Right. Some of the programs come with pitch shifters. So you can change, you know, instead of changing guitars when you're playing, when you're playing along with some songs and some of them are in standard and then some of them are, you know, a half step down, yeah. full step down. Like drop D, you still got to change guitars. So you still got to have the E string dropped. But um, oh, yeah. some of them have pitch shifters that will bring the entire register of your, your guitar down a half step, full step. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've Johnny's got the even tight me. harmonizer suite. For uh, um, for the computer, it's the same. It's the exact model of the even tight harmonizer with the H three thousand, the rack mount stuff that like Steve I used and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. oh, wow. amazing piece of software. And <laughs> I, I'm like a monkey with a rock. I barely know how to use it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's I, I I get really lost on a lot of it. Johnny's asking me if I have a quad cortex. I'll tell you, I, I I would love a quad cortex, and I have thought about buying one for the longest time. But those things are close to two thousand dollars right now. You know, and so I that's, mean that's, that's big boy money right there. So. It is, it is, and it's one of those things that I remember when I had the Zoom G3, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out how to use it. I was a little bit unsure about getting this one, the Zoom G11. But this, the thing that that made it easy for me is it has uh, a uh, an LCD screen touch interface that made it easy for me. It's like okay, I can figure this out with the plugins and things like that I have on my computer. It has an entire list of. Um, different presets in there so it's like it's easy for me to just go and hit that punch that in all that stuff i haven't played around with the quad cortex um but you know that thing it seems to be that and the tone x seem to be the best of the best at the moment in terms of um the digital stuff and the the, yeah, tone the quad, quad cortex is no joke yeah yeah quad cortex and they're able to do captures in the quad cortex now one thing i've looked at ever since the day they came out are the Kemper profilers yeah well the yeah. Uh, the the, the tonex pedal does the same thing as a Kemper for only four hundred dollars yeah. you capture anything in there in terms of amps fuzzes overdrives or distortions yeah, but the Kemper's big and it's green. It's yeah, so you want to you you want something big and green and very expensive to haul around, or something that <laughs> I want that Kemper, dude. Be honest with you, fuck your pedal. <laughs> Just that size. And that's and the sad thing is, I feel bad that I haven't really gotten to play around with it. I've had it for about a year, haven't gotten to mess with it too much. Not to the extent I want to, because this right here, this will open up a whole world of possibilities for you. Um, STL tones. Um, uh, they've done a bunch of really, really good. Um, standalones, VSTs, you know, the computer modeling programs. And what can I know? 
but it's a company called STL Tones, and they've actually gotten a couple of producers like Andy James, Howard Benson. These are all like huge heavy hitters in the metal world, and they've put out some different amps. But the big thing with <laughs> your little bug yelling in the background. <laughs> um, they have a program that's called Amp Hub, and it's got 50 some odd amps in it, a um, bunch of different effects. And then right. on top of that, they have another program that's called Tone Hub, and that's actually made by artists, and it's also got a little community, just like the, the Tonex does. Yeah. Um, where people can submit their um, their patches. Well, that's just it's just another alternative that I've discovered. Gotcha. And gotcha. if you can if you can ever catch it on sale by um, <coughs> I think it's Audio Assault. Is it? Let me look at the company. I want to make sure I get it right. I'm pretty sure it's audio assault, but it's a program called reamp and you can either run your tracks through it and pick a different amp from, they literally have a line six spider insane and they have the old school insane setting. So it's, Isn't that what you it use, Scott, as a Line 6 Spider? Yep. <clears throat> right. Those things are great. It's got the, yeah, it's got an interface or audio interface where yeah, I'll be, it's supposed to, where I can play through this computer where you guys build it. I just don't know what the hell mm -hmm. I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> All you got to do is yeah. just download, yeah, for, the, download the software for it and plug it in and start playing with it. Right. That's what I did. Right. This, um. I got that line six. It's got so much shit on it. I've never even. I've got it for a couple of years. I don't know. But it's like an all-purpose amp for a guy like me that's just going to be in his bedroom and uh, yeah, ain't got money for all the gadgets and stuff. The line six, pretty well. That's pretty well what I what I use. Yeah, that's why I started using the modeling stuff. It's because I can't afford all this. I can't afford all this crap. Yeah. You know, we got a family. We got a kid. Mortgage. You know, two cars. American dream, but. There's only there's only so much, so why not get the modeled software that's you know, I'm playing through amps that I, I've only dreamed of being able to play right. through. Like this one's a this is an SLO one hundred, a Saldana one hundred. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> it, it actually gets a little bit snottier. You know what I'm like going to do one, is huh? I'm going to try and find the um, cord for my uh, for my Tonex, and I'm going to see if um, I can show you guys uh, what that thing does. I just got to find the power cord for this sucker. So you guys talk amongst <clears throat> yourselves. All righty. I've had this uh, Line 6 for a couple of years, and it's got, I probably ain't used a tenth of what I can do because I just want to play. I ain't got time to experiment. Yeah, I had to uh, go into the same thing like with the Boss Katana and... But no, that's where I kind of like got started with it. Where I actually got started with the computer stuff was not that Line 6, but it was another piece of Line 6 software. But it was, you remember the little red kidney bean that they had? I don't know. It was about... Your, your audio cut out. I don't hear nothing. 
Still don't hear you. No sound. Lost your sound, Joey. Uh oh, Scott's gonna have to take over. Lost your sound, Joey. <laughs> See, uh, they make cool stuff. Yeah, line six, and it, it's the uh, line six affordable too. I know this line six kind of got a bad rap reputation uh, from what I see on the. The internet, uh, people wanting to shit on them and their tones and stuff, but it's okay for me. I always just put on the Cowboys from uh, the Cowboys from Hell preset, the Pantera preset, and that's pretty much all I use on it. That and the the wall, the yeah, the presets is pretty much I what I use. I I didn't even make my own. Uh, my own stuff. My own stuff. Cool. I don't have any. I don't really have any hardly any pedals either. Yep. Joey fo- totally dropped. Yeah, I out think. There. Yeah, I think we totally lost him. Uh, okay. Well, I'm still searching. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody remember crate amplifiers? <laughs> Those, I don't know if I just had the, uh, if it, you know, it might not be as cool now if I heard what, but I feel like I've been looking for the sound of a crate amplifier for 20 years. I can't, I was, I, I had, I, I thought it was the crate amplifiers was the, the, the amp of the 80s. I had a couple of crates. Yeah, the crate's my favorite. I ain't seen one in a long time, but. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can hear You're you. Sideways, but I can hear you. <laughs> Son of a beach. There you go. Oh, this ain't this ain't gonna work. Why aren't you turning? You turned last time. You turned. What <laughs> now? Turn you, son of a bitch. <laughs> Kill your dog. <laughs> you know, it's always something with me. Always. It's like watching a monkey try and make out with a football. Auto rotate. There we go. I found the button. (laughs) There we go. I'm good with technology. Maybe I can use this. This Johnny, what's the grid 40 in the chat? Not sure what that is. Yeah, that's what I told him. I don't, I don't really have any much knowledge on the pedals. And... Yeah. Um... Yeah. <laughs> good, you're on point with that. Why? It was good. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what I was going to say when you was gone. Uh, I ain't really mess with too much on this uh, amplifier. The presets. I usually use the Cowboys from Hell presets. A couple of the other ones. Yeah. I ain't even got my own nice. preset uh, fixed up in, the, in that auto wall. Like nice. Oh, that was an auto wall. I thought you were using your yeah. foot. No, that's off, no, <laughs> that's off good? the the line six amplifier. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude, you got good timing with that. Really good. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh. Okay, here's what I ended up doing. I found a um um another nine double ender volt DC out and it ended up working. So I was making Yay. sure that it's definitely what it needs to be. But um I'm gonna go and set up my guitar here to do this. Oh, Chris, does that uh, does that Tonex pedal? Does that take a nine volt battery? It doesn't. No batteries on this thing. No. Okay. Well, there went that suggestion. Well, you know what? I'll give it anyways. Oh, there's a second cord that I needed, and I so old. let me see if I can find. If I don't find one quick, Ow. then I'll just do the interface. Showing you. Oh no! His phone fell. He walked away, and his phone fell. Uh, phone down. Oh gosh. <laughs> He's fallen and he can't get up. Help me. 
We'll be with you in a minute, Mrs. Oh Fletcher. Oh my god. Oh We're learning, people. We're... These first few shows are going to be a little experimental, I think. Yeah, especially when you have an asshole like me on board. Uh. <laughs> so I, env I envision in the future we all have our guitars pumping through these computers where they don't audio duck out like Jibs have those like his and people will be able to hear us and have some visuals. This is going to be a cool show, I think. Yeah, but the same thing when I get work right and run. So we can do that. The problem that I have is right. I can have this completely run through my computer with no problem, but it lags so bad. It, like right now I'm on my phone, and it lags bad. But the computer is so much worse. And I've got a Wi-Fi range extender. It's uh, it's coming. Yeah. So, to beef up the signal and get it where I'm not, you know, 12 seconds behind everybody. <laughs> Okay, you guys aren't going to be able to see um, or hear any of the stuff I'm doing, um, but this is this is the pedal, and as you can see, I have it going into my computer through um, USB over here, and this right over here, I'm going to do the share screen and pull up the Tonex app on the screen here. See here, you guys able to see that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You just name yeah. an amplifier that you guys like. Driftwood Purple Nightmare. <laughs> I'm just gonna put in driftwood. I sound like a strain of marijuana. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> If it's in there, which it probably should be, wait till you hear this thing. If you haven't heard this amp before, no, I haven't. Is yeah, driftwood it'll blow your two butt. words or one? Say what? Is driftwood two words or one? Oh, I, I need to connect to the tone. One word. Okay. Hold on, I got to connect to the tone net. I forgot to do that. That's wow. one of the things I kept forgetting. All right, there we go. Logging in through the back door, Captain. It's a little bit muddy, but we'll get through. <laughs> okay, so it's real quick, he, while while he's logging while he's logging in, um, I had brought up the subject of batteries. You know, if his pedal had a battery and fighting around for that, mm -hmm. looking for a power supply or not. But one thing that has really saved my life and a lot of money are rechargeable nine volt batteries. From Amazon. Oh. Oh, nice. It's just a standard USB. You plug oh, it yeah. in just like your yeah. phone. Yeah. Oh, nice. And they work yeah, got, really, really well. I got I got the Driftwood Purple Nightmare here. Yeah. Uh, with a cab that's an orange 2x12. I can go ahead sure. and send that to my pedal. I can do yeah. this one that has a orange PC412 with a bunch of clarity. Um, there's another purple nightmare with an orange with a neo green back and a bunch of starting. So, yeah, I can find that on here. Um, and add it to my pedal to play through my amp or play it through my DAW if I wanted to. Yeah. That purple nightmare is something. That amp is sick. Oh, my lord. I want one so bad. That, or have you guys ever heard of a KSR? The guy that builds them, his name is Kyle, Kyle S. Rhodes. It used to be Rhodes Amplification, but now it's KSR. And he makes some just superb high-gain amps, but they're wicked expensive. Like that one that he's got on screen right there, that Driftwood Purple Nightmare, I think is like three grand. Yeah, I'm going to see if I slide. Phone down. Phone down. Ah, why? No. Why did everything wrong and embarrassing have to happen to me? It's like when I shit myself in the grocery store. Well, I kind of do that on purpose. <laughs> Social distancing. 
Oh, we lost okay. him. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> oh goodness. He said he shit himself well, in the grocery store and fell off. Yeah, and I got uh, Slash's amp over here, his Marshall, that I can add to this. Um, it's got a high gain sound, a drive, another high gain with the tube, tube screamer. Um, and I got the album tone, the Appetite for Destruction al- album tone here. Third time's a um, charm. <laughs> got the clean sound right. and so yeah you know i got that in here um what's it what's a clean tone for the uh um for the slash um appetite for destruction marshall um, i also got his settings for out to get me um i also got the marshall jubilee that he ended up using and uh the one thing I can do is go to the collections. In fact, some collections that you can uh, pay for and some that are free. Well, what do they charge for presets? Does it vary? They're about yeah, they vary based upon who made them. Um, all the ones that IK Multimedia make, which are the company that owns Tonex and Amplitude, all of theirs are free. But they've also made it so other people can go and upload their captures. But they're about fifteen dollars to twenty eight dollars. Um, yeah. Like uh, Fender has their own thing they've done for the Prince uh, the Prince Reverb uh, from the '66 Princeton Reverb for twenty nine ninety nine, and then you have other companies like um, um, at Match Thirty. There's and of course Jimmy Hen- the Jimi Hendrix Estate has his gear captured in here because they. That I mean the the Jimi Hendrix estate they go in the, they that, like that was one I have a positive grid spark and uh, yeah that's the only only expansion pack available for the positive grid spark is the the Hendrix um, amplifiers yeah and I did a video just, on that the day it came out that that thing's sitting oh, at yeah. like fifty thousand watches now wow. Yeah, I, uh, not one of those amps appeal to me. So, and it's just, it's from my style and what I like to play and what, what have you, but it just, it's surprising that that is the only expansion pack available. It's because of the fact that I guarantee you they were probably the first they could get to do that, considering the positive grid spark, you know, looking at that between the other modeling software that you have, Positive Grid Spark is not one of the best modelers out there. But, um, you know, like if I go in here, like one of the first things that pops up before I even search anything is the uh, PB6505, which I'm sure is one of your favorites. And uh, the Fender Deluxe Clean. The one right before it, the 5150. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, fifty-one fifty is in here as well. Um, you can go and get that. Uh, well. Yeah, if I look up fifty. You ever hear one of those running, running through a Mesa four twelve? I'll get you a foot here in just a minute here. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely brutal. Yeah. I've actually I've never had that amp above seven. Oh really? There's a fifty one fifty going through a vintage thirties, going into an EVH four by twelve, going into a Vin C, whatever the hell that is. Uh going a what? into a Marshall Greenback. Vin C. I don't know what that is. 
EVH 2x12, a Friedman 2x12 with a 5150 going into it, a Mesa Rectifier Vintage 30 um, with 5150 going into the uh, cab for that. Here's one going into a uh, Mesa Rectifier Vintage 30. Oh, that's the D30, that's the same thing. Uh, vintage 30s again. I don't have much room to talk. Most of my speakers here are vintage 30s. Uh, yeah, here's, here's a 5150 going into a Marshall 1970 vintage. Um, 5150 going into a PV 6505. Uh, here's a Mesa Boogie 2x12. Is that what you said? Uh, well, I have a, I have a four four twelve. Okay. So that was. Uh, I found it at the right time. I have, I've, I've got two four twelve cabinets, and I have no use for them. I don't play out. I don't play in a band. But yeah. um, damn it, I've got them. <laughs> but the Mesa came along. That was like a dream piece of gear, like a unicorn. <clears throat> and it, I was. Just at the right place. I got a hell of a deal on it, and um, it's probably one of the nastiest cabinets I've ever owned. It's it's oversized. It's huge. It can handle anything you throw at it. And it's so astoundingly loud. The sound pressure that thing puts out it pushes you back. It's phenomenal. <laughs> I have a really hard time hearing. This up here will tell you what it is I already have on my pedal over here. Mm -hmm. What I got in here right now is I got a uh, uh, a bass breaker, a Fender uh, bass breaker 30. I got a couple of Princeton reverbs, got a couple of Princeton reverb combos. Got Joe Bonamassa's Dumble Lamp in here. His Dumble that uh, is the... Um, uh, I think it's number 26. I have all of them. Got the Tone King Imperial in here. Got a Mesa Boogie. A couple of 5150s. I got a Bulgara. Got a couple of JCM 800s and 900s. Um, I got a Pillet Billy Corgan's Diesel in here. Ah. I got a Klon Centaur. Are you guys familiar with the diesel ampl amplifiers? I remember them from back in the day. Never played one though. Uh, they are. That's that's one piece of. I would love one, like a VH4 or a Herbert, and they even actually have a. Um, it's a modeling amp, sort of. I th kind of. I don't have a whole lot of details on it, but they they're made in Germany. They're handmade. And they are just brutally, brutally loud, um, crystal clear, super high gain amps, and they're they're great, but they're rippingly expensive. But but man, are they great! Uh, yeah, this is this is something that I've had for a year, and I'm gonna need to go and uh, you know try out a little bit more with it. But uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I might mess around with it this afternoon. But, uh, guys, anything else you guys got before it is that we go and uh, uh, wrap up over here, Scott? Any other things um, you want to bring up? No, uh, maybe if uh, people have suggestions on how we can make maybe a uh, show a little bit better or something. Because <laughs> I, I, got, I got, you know, things that we could uh, do... Like, like today, I figured I, I learned that I know some bringing some visuals to the. I didn't even think about doing that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, just yeah, just let me know next time, and we'll go and pop them yeah. up on here. And so I guess it, next week is is it my turn to pick out a, a topic? It's not mine. Yeah, yeah, it would okay. it would be because I I did the week before. Okay, so how about how about we do this for next week? How about different styles of guitar and what makes them different, 
what the difference is in the tone of each guitar in terms of what it is that they are known for. Does that sound good? Yeah, that's good. I got a few examples I could bring to the game on that. Excellent. I got, yeah, bring out I got that, a nylon uh, string guitar and a steel guitar and a, you know, the different, yeah, I got you. Absolutely. Bring out that uh, Esteban guitar. Get yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got the little amp that came with it too, but it don't work. Oh my gosh! Wow. <laughs> that amp, that amp had to be so bad. It had to be so horrible. Yeah, I wanted to listen to it, but it, it don't work. Oh, there's stuff, there's stuff so in my. Bad. I got the way the way I got it was something out of my dad's. I inherited my dad's guitar collection, and uh, that was one of his one of the, one of the one of the prizes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Junk. Oof. Oh goodness! Have you guys ever heard of Gorilla Heart. amplifiers? Yep. yep. Yes, that was my first. That was my very first amplifier. Yeah. <laughs> a little practice amp that everybody would get as a first amp. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, Bobby. Uh, next, uh, my, the whole ten minutes I've been here, don't change a thing. Yeah, he had his show today, his music show. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, Johnny says sleeper guitar, guitars telly, that pedal paint off the walls. What? What the hell's he talking about there? <sighs> sleeper guitars telly that that peel paint off the walls. I'm guessing he's saying he's a Telecaster fan. Yeah, maybe. I suppose boy, I was taking it. He probably like John Five. He John Five uh, brought the telly to the metal world, I guess. Yep, yep. Which no. is really surprising because you would not expect him, a metal guy, to be going and doing Dude. the the Telecaster. But I'll tell you, I was not a fan of the Telecaster for many years. I just thought it was the ugliest darn guitar. But I'll tell you, it's one of the most versatile guitars out there. It really is. <laughs> I, I don't know what these guitars are called. I just recently, I wanted to experiment and get one one time, but there's a lady, it's her name's Samantha Fish, and I just come across her, and she plays like a, it's one of them oil can looking guitars uh, with a slide, of real bluesy. Uh, if, if you never heard of her, I'll send you something. Cause you, yeah, she, uh, what'd you say? Uh, cigar box, box guitar. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know what they're called. You know what I'm talking about? Them old timers, uh, old time black, black guys used to play them. That homemade guitars out of like an oil can yep. or something. Uh, but I yeah, got a buddy that makes them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there, there are, she there makes are sound kids in Yeah, yeah. I've seen where they had kids and stuff. I, yeah, I was thinking about getting one of them. You guys know Samantha no. Fish? I think I think I do. Is that the girl that's always wearing the pink dress when she's playing? Uh, she's kind of she's pretty easy on the eyes. She's got blonde hair. Usually plays barefoot, but uh, um, I might be thinking. I don't of really Sophie remember Burrell, in a particular possibly. dress. I might be thinking. Of Sophie I'll send you. I'll, I'll just uh, later on. I'll send you one, uh, my first Samantha. I'll send you something. You're gonna like her. <laughs> Samantha Fish, you said right? Yep. 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 She plays metal metal songs on it. Blue, that, she plays everything on it, but uh, yeah, she made okay. me like that thing. She got some good. She got good sounds out of it. Okay, I yeah, I see. I see. She's playing a a live concert in town somewhere with one of those guitars, and yeah, yeah. I think I'm thinking of so of of Sophia Burrell is is who I was thinking of. But yeah, here's a couple others where yeah. she's playing a. Uh, an, a, an SG, and then she's playing a Telecaster, so she's kind of all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Check check her out if you ever get a chance. Especially check her out on that oil can guitar. That was pretty badass on that thing. Yeah, I'll check that out. Uh, Johnny says I got a '59 Paul, Junior Paul with P90 and 10K uh, EVH pickups that looks old school but cranks. I, 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 my next guitar is going to be one with P90s. I got to have one with P90s. I know those pickups he's talking about. Oh, because they're, they look old school. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, old Tom Schultz, his Les Paul had P90s in it that he would always play. You talking about the oh. dude from Boston? Did I? Yeah, yeah, the guy from really Boston. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the two dollars, there, Bobby Nick. That's very kind of you, there, brother. We appreciate oh, that. Bobby, Did I have a dangler. He could just be messing with you. Check it. I keep classic with a uh, duck on custom buckers. I got to tell you the those uh those slash buckers that are in this thing are the craziest pickups I've ever had in a guitar. That thing will take me into any tone variety that I want to go into. I am just astounded by that. Um Johnny also says great show on Rumble there Bobby Nick. Yeah, Bobby does a great great job with music videos and all that stuff right over there great show but um yeah so guys i guess we'll catch up with you guys next week 2 30 again same same time same bat channel it works yeah Heck. oh and one of these discussing. times I'll, I'll show up on time <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 we get one of these days it'll happen <laughs> but uh next week we'll be going over different types of guitars, what makes them different, what it is that they're traditionally made for, and the type of tones that you can expect out of those guitars, and some of the things that can make it not sound like those things. So that ought to be an interesting show. And then the week after that, um, we got uh, Joey's going to have to choose another topic, and then... Once again, Scott on week number three. So you guys be thinking on those, all right? Yeah, I mean, yeah that's what's going to be good. I'm going to make it better. I've hey, you did great today, then. Oh, yeah, you did? Today was awesome. So I think I already got my ideas for mine coming up. I want well, to do you guys want to? Visuals and uh, connecting pentatonic boxes is what we'll talk about, maybe. Ooh. For mine. Ooh. Get to talk about the box. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, I so, like so, what box. do you have on the horizon there, Joey? I'm thinking about making you, all of you, sit down and learn how to use your damn Floyd roses. I'm sick of listening to people bitch, piss, and minge <laughs> about something they don't know how to use. You're not doing it right. You're doing it wrong. Stop. Well, let me tell let you, me I've you. gotten a lot better with it. I've gotten a lot better with it. I can I can demystify it for you within an hour. We'll nice. have you doing string changes in 20 minutes with a little bit of practice. You'll be Ooh. retuning and refloating in under 15 minutes tops, which is quick for nice. a Floyd Rose. So, oh, yeah. That is quick <laughs> for a Floyd Rose. It was probably some of the most valuable guitar information I ever learned. And I can't find the videos anymore online. So I'm really thinking about going through and making one. So should I wait to restring my uh, my Floyd Rose and kill that stream? Are you going to make us all restring live on stream? If you want to. I'll if you that. want to, that's up to you. I, I, I would uh, – yeah, Johnny, I can definitely help you. And, Johnny, if you want to, if you need – if you really need help, I'll set up a Zoom call with you guys, and I'll walk you through it. So nice. it's not a problem. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, um, my my username is my first and last name. It's Joey Van Ostrand um, at gmail.com. So feel free to get a hold of me anytime. I'll set up a private Zoom call with you or I'll do an instruction on the show in a couple of weeks. So excellent. But it's not that hard. You're making it too hard. And the Floyd Rose specials aren't bad bridges. Now, what is the one that I have on my EVH Wolfgang? I believe that's a Floyd Rose special, is it not? Yeah, we both. I've got one too. I've got a standard, and it's got a special on it. And yeah. I can probably, short of throwing that thing down a set of stairs, it'll stay in tune without a problem. Yeah, and those are not gonna, And you're not going to bang it up too much because of that uh, that uh, roasted maple neck on there. 
Well, mine actually is uh, before that. Mine's a 2019. Gotcha. And uh, it's, uh, did you ever see the Mango Burst? Yeah. Yeah, the Mango Burst. uh, um, There was also, if I remember correctly, I think, yeah, yeah, that's also the same burst design used uh, when Eddie toured with Gary Sharon. That was the main one that he would bring out with that one. Uh, PV had the same burst on it. And that's a nice burst I, on that guitar. I love this guitar. <laughs> it's it's now, let so me ask you, did you, close to perfect. Did you switch out the pickups in that thing? No, they're awesome. No. They're great. Okay. I don't like the neck pickup in it, but then again, you're mainly on the bridge. Usually yeah, I never right? use an act pickup, so yeah, usually never use it. Yeah, I kind of go all over the place. But, uh, and Scott, yeah, guys. What, were, what were you showing me real quick with your? Uh... Just chatting. Oh, I was just you when you guys was talking. You guys was talking. When you guys was uh, talking about that, I was just throwing up a visual for the people, and then I got one, and <laughs> oh, okay, I'll yeah. change my yeah. strings along with you. Yep, and the um, the Ibanez bridges, the Ibanez edges. That's not an edge. Right. That's a, is that a no? This that's is a a, fluid, right? Right. Is that an edge? It's licensed. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. See, they, I kind of the like Ibanez it. edges work, work the same way. So. I kind of like Joey's um, uh, top on his better than I do the the one that's on mine. That's right behind my head there. I did a little bit of a polish on this. Well, I did a lot of bit of a polish on this, um, mm-hmm. and it really brought up brought it out. So, but it's nice. gorgeous. But How would you compare it to one. the uh, to the uh, PV ones? Is it better than the PV? Is it better than the Music Man? Better than the Ernie Ball? That's kind of hard to say because those were they're great guitars. Yeah, they're on and par. A lot more on expensive. Par with the, the standards are they're on par with it. They'll stand next to them, um, but they are some really good guitars. So, oh yeah. When when those companies were forced to make stuff for Eddie, um, they had to do it right. They had to do it right. So, yeah, that's why they're, I'm, they're, I'm, there's a story that the Eddie had an issue with PV. And the necks being all messed up on the guitars and all this stuff. And he went into the offices over there at PV and went and set up the guitar beforehand and took the guitar and threw it across the boardroom. And he said, now go pick that up. He had somebody go and pick it up. And he says, now strum it. Tell me if it's in tune. And and they're like, and they're like, yep. And he goes, he goes, you guys need to learn how to set up these these guitars with my name on it if you are going to send them out. And so PV had to do a full 180 on that whenever that happened. Um, yeah, they yeah having- there's another Yeah. Yeah, there's another story of him um they were going out and doing a couple of tour dates so he had a uh, um like a uh, a trial production model. Yeah. What are they called? A demo or something. Mm-hmm. They made up for him to test out. So he turns it on, cranks it up, and it's whistling and screaming and feeding back. And he shuts the door. And he said he came back a month later after going on the road. I opens up the door and it's still screaming and making noise. Yep. He's like, all right, you passed. So it's definitely yeah, quality I heard that gear. Story. So, yeah. <laughs> so, if it's built that well, you know, how can you go wrong? And the thing I can and say is that even, great. the thing I can say is that even though it's not my favorite of my guitars, the thing is I can always rely on it. I may not like the feel of it and all that stuff uh, um, because, you know, the neck is, it seems to be kind of small to me. It's you know? tiny. But tiny it is, neck. you know. And that's and that's hard for me. I mess up more, but the thing is, every time I pick up that guitar, I know I'm not going to have any sort of issue 
with the setup from it. And that, you really can't say that about guitars under $1,000 today. But that one, you can. There's a, there's yeah. a few. So, but yeah, anybody on the fence about getting one of these, do it. You won't, you won't regret it. Unless it is that you're like me and are used to a Les Paul neck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well, guys, I we'll catch you. Every- we'll catch everybody next week. And uh, next week we're going to be talking about various styles of guitars, what it is they're used for, what they're going to sound like. And so, so catch you guys at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next Sunday. Shalom.